I miss seeing all of you every week. It's like I would go over there and everyone would say hi and be nice, but I missed seeing you guys right here, just like this, every single week. So it's good to be back. Now you would think, you would think that with five weeks off and nothing to do really but get ready for this Sunday, you would think with nothing to do but get ready for this message, get ready for what I'm going to talk about right now, you would think that I would have something really incredible to say. You would think that with five weeks of preparation, I would come up with some sort of really clever visual, something that you would remember that you would never, ever forget. You would think. And you'd be wrong. See, what, what I did have was a really great idea. I have a lot of really great ideas. And so way back in July, when I was talking to her, about today. He said, Aaron, the whole point of today is that we want to be a church on the move. We want to be a church that leaves the walls of this building and goes out into the community and into the world and makes a difference. And today, the first step in doing that is that we need to come together as a group. We need to unite as a group. And so today, it's all about coming together and being united as small groups. And I had a great idea. I thought, you know what I should do? I should weave a basket. These things just come to me. And I thought, you know, like, you could have these little strips of wood or wicker, whatever you call them, and by themselves they're pretty useless. But maybe, like, while I'm talking, I could be weaving this basket, and I could weave all the strips of wicker together, and I could show you how if you take all these strips of wicker that by themselves don't do very much, you could make a beautiful basket. Isn't that a good idea? trouble is I don't know how to weave a basket. So I thought, I don't know how to weave a basket. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look like a fool. And then I was reading the book of Job at home one day, and I ran across um, Job chapter 6, and there's just this verse, and um, you don't need to worry about too much what the verse means. I'm just going to tell you what it says. It says, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. And it occurred to me that I barely knew what a weaver was. I had no idea what a shuttle was, and I certainly had no idea how swift or not swift or Taylor Swift it might be. And so I'm looking at this verse and I'm thinking, you know what? They talk about weaving as an analogy in the Bible a lot, and if I don't try to learn how to weave something, I'm not going to be able to understand my Bible as well as I probably should. So I went to Michael's. I walked into Michael's, 26-year-old dude, facial hair, I said, hello, where are your basket weaving supplies? And they looked at me for a while, and they showed me the basket weaving supplies, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to learn how to weave a basket. And I still don't know how to weave a basket. I made a thing, but I think it lacked many of the necessary properties of a basket. For example, it was ugly and it had jagged edges. It was a basket that I cut myself with. <laughs> and most importantly, once it was done, I thought, oh, look at my basket. I will put a book in it. And I placed the book in the basket, and the whole thing fell through. And if the ba basket cannot hold things, then the basket is probably not a basket, right? I mean, that's the one thing a basket has to do. A basket has to hold things. If a basket can't hold things, it is not a basket. It is a piece of garbage mess. That's what I had. So I thought, you know what? I got to talk about baskets. I got to talk about baskets as something that at least I can understand. So I did some research about baskets. And most baskets are made out of strips of bamboo. And if you've ever seen bamboo, it's a big, thick grass that grows. And they take a knife and they cut these skinny strips of it. And you take about 20, 25, 30 strips, depending on the size of the basket you want. And you weave them into a basket. And we've already been through this. I don't understand that. The other thing that people do in these villages sometimes with these strips of bamboo is they use them as a weapon or torture device. And I thought, that I understand. Because the strip of bamboo is used like a whip. And I took middle school gym class, and lots of kids whipped me with towels. So I can understand this. I know a lot about being whipped by a towel, therefore I think I can kind of understand what it would be like to whipped by a strip of bamboo. And the worst one that I ever got with a towel, I was reaching up to get something out of my locker and someone towel snapped me right in the armpit. 
right in the armpit, and it hurt, and this always kind of hurts, and it hurts really bad for a while, and then it, it kind of goes away. So I started gym class, and my arm really hurt, and then I started running around and having fun, and I kind of forgot that my arm hurt, and it went away. Only this was different. This one was different, because I got back to my locker, and I got my deodorant, and I was like, do-do-do-do-do, do do Oh! It felt like someone had set my arm on fire. This was the worst towel whipping I had ever experienced. Because I had two options. I could either put deodorant on it, which meant that my armpit would be on fire, or I could not put deodorant on it, which means that I would sweat, the sweat would get in the cut, and I would be on fire, and I would stink. So for four days, I was in agony over this one whip with a towel. Here's the crazy thing about the bamboo strip whip. In addition to doing that, it also causes hundreds of tiny paper cuts. This sounds awful. Okay, I'm glad we did not do bamboo class when we were in gym because I wouldn't be here. I would have given up on life. This would not have been a good thing. And yet someone, somewhere, at some time, someone who knew what they were doing said, let's take these things that are dangerous, that are hurtful, that we use as weapons, and turn them in to something that is useful. And I think that that is beautiful and incredible, that you can take a bunch of tiny things that cause a lot of hurt and put them together to cause something that will help people. I was reading, there are some anthropologists who consider the four most important inventions of mankind to be fire, the wheel, the water jug, and the basket. These are some of the four, the four inventions that have helped man grow into a civilized culture, because without baskets, you don't get to a shopping cart, you don't get to a backpack, you don't get to a grocery bag, you don't get to pants pockets, because all of these things are just variations on the basket, a way to carry things that you otherwise could not easily carry and that improve people's lives. Dozens of these little, vicious, paper-cutting whip weapons come together to create something that's going to help people. This is Luke chapter 9. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It tells us here that Jesus called all of his disciples together and he gave them power. And the word that gets me is them. It doesn't say each of them. He gave them power. As a group, he gave them power. We're going to find out later that every time Jesus sends out his disciples, he sends them out in groups of two, sometimes more, and never less. They had power as a group and alone not so much. In fact, if you read through the scriptures and the gospels, there's only one real notable story about a disciple who went somewhere by himself to do something by himself. Does anyone know what that is? Did I hear someone whisper Judas? Oh, you guys were here earlier, weren't you? Good work. Good work, Deontay. <laughs> Judas! Maybe he was supposed to be with the group. Maybe he was supposed to be the partner. He went off to do something by himself. And that something that he did was sell Jesus over to be killed for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus took his disciples as a team, as a group, gave them power as pairs and trios and as a group. And when they kind of scattered and got apart from each other, it didn't go so well. It went poorly. And I think what, what we can learn about this in ministry is that all the great ideas that we have don't mean much unless we are given power in a group to make them happen. See, I learned four things about baskets this week. I learned four things about baskets. They're more important than I thought they were. That's number one. Number two, an individual strip of a basket can be a very dangerous thing. Number three, you need a master craftsman to make a good basket. And number four, I am not a master craftsman. I also learned four things about the way that Jesus did ministry with groups. They're way more important than I ever thought they were. Number two, an individual person can be a very dangerous thing. Number three, 
you need an omniscient creator to put together a fantastic group. And I already knew number four, that I am not an omniscient creator. This group of 12 disciples, this wasn't just an idea that Jesus had where he said, you know what, it would be better if I had teams of people doing ministry. Let's grab the first 12 people that come to the door and put them in a group. Before they got to this point where they were given power and authority to cure diseases, heal the sick, before that happened, they spent time with Jesus, they prayed with Jesus, they became like a family together. And so the first step, if we're going to do God's work in this community, is that we need to come together as little groups to do that kind of work.